tell your spouse, your partner, or colleagues at work, or your children, or your friends about? My guess is that the vast majority of us are not aware that we saw any miracles. And that is exactly the point that Peter is making. To the extent that we don't see the miracles that are happening every single nanosecond, from the moment we draw our first breath in the morning until the moment that we draw our last at the end of our lives, we are living in death. We are living disconnected from God. In Peter's language, we are killing the author of life. That's intense. Over and over, we are, you and I. Now, here's the good news. We are a resurrection people. We have just reaffirmed the centrality of the resurrection in our lives. And that means something. It means that we do not need to live any longer in the fear that death is the final word. We can trust ourselves to the author of life and to the unpredictable delight of miracles swirling, swirling around us on all sides 24 7 and 360. We can notice them and name them. It means we can give up on that illusion of control we like to have. We can cut loose and live in the moment. This one, right here and right now. Notice that we are breathing. Gravity is working. How's that, Mr. Physics? Gravity is working. There is grass and flowers and the trees out there. There was sunlight, but soon there will be rain, which will feed the trees and the little grass and flowers. We have food to eat. There are birds. And there is someone nearby us in our pews that love us. We can lean joyfully and wholeheartedly into a love affair with the divine. Those are miracles. <coughs> Instead of furrowing our brow and pursing our lips and taking colors and sounds and smells and laughter of babies and tears and digestion even for granted, we can crack open our hearts and say, We can say thanks. Instead of plodding along, we can dance. Instead of sniping or complaining, we can sing. Now, if you want to see life as a grind, no one's going to stop you. I would just like to point out, since that's my job, that it is pretty depressing. It's a pretty depressing way to eke out one's existence. I'd like to observe that it makes for a whole lot of really stressed lives, really cranky people, and really unhealthy experiences. Really, in our own bodies, it makes us sick. Peter is telling us that we can expect more of life than that. We just need to repent, which only means to literally turn around and see things from a different perspective, and align ourselves with joy rather than rigid control and narrow focus. As it turns out, cultivating joy has significant health benefits, has significant friendship benefits, and even career benefits. Trying to control the entire universe by our own power, or piety, or ritual, or rules, or accumulation of savings, on the other hand, is a sure path to despair, depression, and misery. And the harder we work at it, the less we notice that we are standing deep, deep in miracles all around us. Certainly, there's a need to plan for college tuition, or retirement, or unexpected car repairs, and those are good things to prepare for. I'm not saying that. But Peter is telling us that rejecting God's infinite blessings and the conviction that you can do better under your own scheme, that is choosing death. As a minister, it has been my privilege to walk with people through the end of their lives. I know from experience that not every human condition can be fixed. But I also know that that condition doesn't need to define the person or their journey. The folks who see the miraculous and what the rest of us see as perfectly mundane, those women and men 
defeated by a worn-out body. Their spirits and minds continue to soar. They know surprise and delight, even in great weakness and indignity. They laugh and spread happiness and charm the hospice nurses. They step across the threshold with an eager expectation that something, something amazing waits on the other side. There are other people who sit in my office, sometimes with tight lips and white knuckles, if that third hymn, Jane, on Sunday was too new, or if the carpet chosen was not what they wanted. I'm not using real examples here. <laughs> they have no eager expectations of anything, and rarely experience joy. How sad is that? I suspect they wouldn't see a miracle if it sat on their lap and heard. They may be in perfect health, but everything about their lives screams death. They're life rejectors. And the life they reject day after day is their own. Peter is speaking to all of us who reject life, whether consistently or occasionally. He is reminding us that we always have a choice. He says, oh, stop with the control already. Repent. Let's go. Turn to the one who is our holy wonder. Walk away from everything that separates you from the healing love, the abounding joy, the amazing surprise, the refreshing peace that is God's infinite shower of miracles. In short, live. We have that choice. You and I have that choice. Will you join me in choosing life? Let's pray. God, we thank you for Peter and his words that are so in our face about how to truly live in God's miracles. To experience love and boundless joy. Help us to choose joy in you. Help us to choose life with you in everything around us. Help us to not close our eyes or turn up our noses, to not see the beauty that you have all around us. In the name of Christ Jesus, our holy wonder, we pray. Amen.